Hello, dear ones. You're all welcome to today's lecture. In our previous lecture, we looked at synchronous motors and we discussed the mode of operations of synchronous motors. Today, we are going to look at power flow in synchronous motors. You know, as we discussed in synchronous generators, um, we are going to use the same thing because the only difference over here happens to be the direction of power flow. In the generator scenario, we know that it was mechanical power that was the input power and then we're getting electric power as our output okay and in between these two then we had our power losses which is the same thing that we are going to discuss over here so if we have our three phase um inputs or three phase electrical power input okay the power flow inside the uh our windings okay and we know that having current flowing through the windings we'll be having our i square r losses in the form of heat okay and then the remaining power that is converted there will be power losses in the core as a result of the ad current and then the hysteresis um, losses and we also be having mechanical losses also as a result of friction and other um, stuff that we term as the mechanical losses we have our strain losses before we are going to get our um, mechanical power as our power output and we know that the mechanical power will be equal to the load torque multiplied by the speed of the um, motor okay we discuss all these things in the synchronous generator so i believe you all remember that just that here the only difference is the direction of power flow all right so let's look at a new thing that we'll be discussing today okay the steady state operations of um synchronous motors so we're going to look at the top speed curve okay when you increase the torque what happens to the speed all right so that's basically what we're going to um discussing today so usually synchronous motors are connected to a large power systems okay that we refer to as infinite buses and we know that with the large power systems we have a fixed uh, or a constant um, frequency and what terminal voltage okay and um because of that um the speed of the motor would never change regardless of the load connected because we know that speed is proportional to frequency and since the frequency is constant we are going to get frequency is constant it means that irrespective of the load connected we are going to have the same speed of the motor so we say that since the motor speed is locked to the electrical frequency the speed should be constant regardless of the load so we can see over here um on this particular graph we see that at zero load or at zero torque the speed was at this particular point now when we increase the torque to the rated torque still we had the same speed if we continue to increase the torque beyond the rated torque to its, the maximum torque, the speed still remains the same. So all that we are saying is irrespective of the torque, the speed remains what constant. Uh, we made mention of two things here, rated torque and then um, the pull-out torque. The rated torque is the rated torque of what? The motor. Okay. And then the pull-out torque is the maximum torque that the motor um, can operate. Uh, so I know they're not clear. Let me use this scenario. All right. Uh, let's use a taxi for instance okay we know that a taxi is designed to take a rated number of pull of what five people one driver and um four other passengers that's what the taxi is rated to take but sometimes you know um you can overload the taxi more than the five people if you load the taxi three i mean five six seven eight people still the taxi will be able to move all right but if you continue to load the people, if you continue to load the taxi, it will get to a point that the taxi will not be able to operate normally. So the maximum number of people that the taxi can take without um, any effect on its normal operation is what we term in terms of motor as the pull-out torque. That's the maximum torque that the motor can operate. So over here, we know that the five people is the, num the rated number of people that the taxi can take. But if you continue to increase the number to the maximum number of people that the taxi can take, becomes the pull-out torque in terms of um, the motor case. All right. So now let's look at something. So the steady state uh, speed of the motor is constant from no load to maximum torque. That is the motor can supply. So the maximum torque is the torque that the motor can supply. But the rated torque is the rated torque of what the motor. Okay. And usually we say that the motor, the uh, pull out torque is about three times that of the rated torque. So, for example, the taxi case if the rated number of people that a taxi can take is about five people, then the pull out torque will be three times that of the five. So, that will be something around what um, 15 people. Take note of that. And we are saying that um, since the speed never changes, 
the speed remains constant then the speed regulation of the motor is zero okay we know that speed regulation is equal to the no low speed minus full low speed over full low speed times 100 so now the no low speed if the no low speed is here the full low speed is still at the same point okay so there's no change in what um the speed so it means that the uh, speed regulation over here is going to what um zero there won't be any speed regulation take note of that and so now let's see uh, we made some important points here that we need to take critical look at um, this is the torque formula okay this is the torque formula if you want to consider the magnetic field okay so this is the <clears throat> the field of the rotor and this is the the net field sine delta i mean the delta is the angle between the two okay i showed you the other time okay or if you want to use the electrical quantities we know that the induced torque is equal to 3 multiplied by the phase voltage multiplied by the ea the, the, the induced voltage all over omega m that's the synchronous speed multiplied by the synchronous reactance sine delta okay we know that the speed is constant it never changes likewise the synchronous reactance to um, is approximately constant okay and since the motor is connected to an infinite power system it means that our terminal voltage is also constant okay and we are making an assumption that our ea2 is constant we know that ea is equal to what k far omega the k is a constant value okay far is for is the flux as a result of what the field excitation and omega is the speed of the motor so omega is constant and we are make we are keeping the field excitation also constant so we can make this assumption that our ea2 is constant so from this formula you can see that all these parameters are constant with regard to what the motor so if there's an uh, increase in load now what will change cause the torque to also increase all right so you can see that the only variable here becomes what our delta and the delta is the angle between the terminal voltage and then the ea okay as we can see from the um, phasor diagram here this is our uh, phase voltage our, our terminal voltage sorry and then this is the ea the internal generated voltage so the angle between the two is what we term as the delta okay there's another angle here don't confuse yourself um with it there's another angle between um, the current and then the voltage this voltage we term this uh, angle as theta that's a power factor angle so we have two angles here the angle between the i and then uh, the v phase that's theta and then another angle between the v phase and then our ea i i talked about all these things when we we're looking at the phasor diagrams okay but we will make use of them when uh, we go to the next chapter all right so we can see that if you continue to increase the angle if you continue to open this gap then it means that we are increasing the torque okay we are increasing delta and increasing delta means that we are increasing what the torque so to what extent can we increase this particular delta okay so at what extent can we get the maximum torque we can only get the maximum torque when delta is what um you can pause the video and think of it okay we are using um trick a, 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 a trick here so sign what value will we get a maximum torque can see that when delta is 90 sine 90 is one okay so when delta is 90 they will be getting our maximum torque so we only get the pull out torque at the point where the angle between these two becomes what 90 this particular angle becomes 90 or when the ea is perpendicular um, to that of the v phase then you get the maximum torque you can't go beyond that you know if you go beyond 90 something like um 100 um, degrees you know that sign 100 the um value begins to decrease you know sign 100 is 0 0.98 uh, sometimes you can use the calculator to confirm okay so going beyond 90 then the uh, torque begins to decrease but you can't operate beyond 92 okay um operating beyond 90 the motor will be operating in uh, an unstable um condition okay i will know that if you continue to increase the delta to maybe 270 you'll be getting another one there cosine 270 is negative one and you also be operating an unstable um uh, condition so take note we only operate it from zero to 90 degrees take note of that all right so we are saying that the maximum pull out torque occurs when delta is equal to what 90 degrees in that case sine 90 becomes one so the formula will be left with this that's if you consider the 
um, electric quantities or for the magnetic case since um, this part will become one it will be left with kbr multiplied by b net as we see over here all right and as i made mention of it the full the no the normal full load torque are much um lesser than that of the rated uh torque so usually the pull out torque is about three times that of the rated torque so take note of that so now let's see what happens if you continue to uh, increase the torque beyond the normal or the maximum torque also known as the pull out torque so when the torque of the shaft or the synchronous motor exceeds the pull out torque the rotor can no longer remain locked to the stator okay so now if you operate the motor or sub, uh, supply more than the pull out torque then the motor will not be able to remain in synchronism okay the uh, flux speed and then the the stator flux speed and then the rotor speed there will be difference in it so you see that um the rotor will begin to slip behind that of the stator the stator flux okay so if uh, that happens what actually happens so you see that as the motor slows down the stator magnetic field laps it repeatedly so it will run over it all uh, over and over and over and over and over okay so how will you even see that if you are an engineer or you're using a motor as a result a huge torque surge of alternating direction occurs in the motor okay so the motor vibrates severely so if you supply more than the pull out torque to the motor one physical evidence or one physical thing that you see the motor will vibrate severely okay so if you see that then you see that you are overloading your synchronous motor okay so we are saying that the loss of synchronization after the pull out torque is exceeded is what we term as a slipping pole take note of this particular thing so if we they, they ask you to find define what slipping pole is the slipping pole is nothing but just like the loss of synchronization after the pull out torque is what exceeded all right take note of that okay so let's see um effects of low torque changes okay so we know that if you increase the torque from zero to the maximum torque the motor will still be able to operate but what happens to the motor itself does anything actually change okay so we are going to look at what happens to the motor if you increase the torque even within um the rated condition what happens to the motor okay all right assuming that a synchronous motor operates initially with a leading power factor as we can see here this represents the leading power factor um phasor diagram okay this represents the leading power factor phasor diagram all right so we can see that um for the leading power factor condition the current always leads the phasor voltage okay so we can see that our current is leading the phasor voltage okay and then this angle represents the torque angle delta is a torque angle theta is the angle between the current and then the phase voltage so we call that one theta and that one is the power factor okay take note of that so if we increase the load okay if the load increase the rotor initially slows down okay it's normal if you increase the load the rotor initially slows down and then the torque will increase the torque angle will increase as a result the induced torque increases increases speeding up the rotor up to the uh, synchronous speed with a larger torque angle okay if you increase the load initially the speed of the motor initially decreases small but that uh, the motor should uh, be in synchronism so in that case the torque angle should increase to increase the torque and more torque meaning that we able to increase the speed once again okay and what happens you see that we need to increase this particular angle that is with the torque scenario you need to increase this particular angle so we can see from this particular graph here that initially we we're having this particular ea with a particular uh, delta let's say this particular angle okay now when there was increase in um, load the ea should open up such that the delta will increase so you see that now the ea has increased towards ea2 now okay so a new point so you can see that del delta has now increased from this particular point now to this particular point you can see that this let's say this delta one this delta two delta two will be much larger than delta one now if you in continue to increase the load again see that the e 
A will increase or will move towards EA3, thereby increasing our angle once more. Okay. So you can see that now our delta is what more than the uh, the delta two and the delta one. Now, if the load continues to increase to E4, likewise our delta continues to open up so that we'll be able to increase the um, torque induced. So you can see that this let's say this is the delta four, delta three, delta two, delta one. Okay, so delta one is much lesser as compared to delta three. Likewise, delta three is lighter than delta four. The same way. So that's how the whole thing. Okay, so increasing delta you can see that increasing delta then we are increasing the induced stock now increasing the induced stock will help the machine or the rotor to catch up with the synchronous speed once more that is one aspect that we're looking at now let's see what happens to the current and then the power factor also now we see that increasing the load there is increasing the torque angle or the delta all right so now let's see what happens to the um the power and then the current and then the um power factor also you know if you increase the load there is also increase in current okay if you increase the load to the motor more current will be drawn from the power source to the motor so you see that now this was our ia initially so if you increase the torque the load current will increase increasing current then the power angle or the torque uh, sorry the power factor or the theta will, will decrease increasing the load theta decreases theta decreasing means that cos theta will increase which is power factor increasing theta decreasing theta power factor increases so you can see that now the angle between i2 and then the v phase the v phase is always constant that one never changes because that is the terminal voltage supply because that one is always constant it's always fixed at a fixed position so now you can see that the delta here or the theta here is small as compared to the theta from uh, ia1 to this particular line okay so if you you can see that now our i2 is approaching the v phase line if you continue to increase the load to let's say i3 okay uh, ea3 -E see that our ia3 will be in phase with the v phase so in that case our theta is zero and we know that cos zero is what one so in that case cos zero is one and we know that a power factor of one is what a, 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 a unity power factor so it means if you increase the load the power factor will be moving from leading to what a unity power factor so now if you get to a unity power factor and you continue to increase the load what happens to it consider now our carrot continue to increase and then the angle now it's also increasing once again but this time you see that now our current is now lagging the uh, phase voltage so we call this one a lagging condition see now the phase voltage is now ahead of uh, the current or the current is now lagging the phase voltage so it has now moved away from the unity power factor condition to a lagging power factor condition okay so if you continue to increase again you see that the angle or the theta will increase so now theta increasing at the lagging power factor condition means that now it's now operating at a poor power factor or the power factor is now decreasing so um let's take note of um, this particular scenario so since the terminal voltage and the frequency supply to the motor are constant the magnitude of the internal generated voltage must be constant at the load changes so you can see that the magnitude of the ea is always constant just that is the angle that is increasing or the angle that is what changing now we have looked at the current you see that the current is increasing the angle is decreasing the power factor is increasing okay delta 2 is what decreasing don't forget don't worry when i finish i'll summarize everything to you now let's see what happens to the power as well you see that when the motor was operating initially the power was what proportional to p1 okay now when the load increases the power increase to p2 likewise p3 p4 so all that we are saying is whilst you are increasing the load the power drawn by the motor is also what increasing because current is increasing let's look at this particular formula okay we know that power is equal to a 3 multiplied by v phase ia so as ia is increasing your power is also increasing okay likewise if you want to use this particular formula 
we know that power is equal to 3 multiplied by the v phase ea all over um xs sine theta sine delta rather so as sine delta is increasing then it means that your power is also increasing so increasing load means that more power will be drawn and this one it makes sense if you load your your, your motor lightly the motor will draw a small power from the um power source if you increase the load connected to the motor it means that more power will be drawn from the power source that is it okay so take note of that so since the phase voltage is constant the quantity the quantities i a cos theta this particular quantity i a cos theta and e a sin theta are directly proportional to the power supply by the motor so when the power supply by the motor increases the distance proportional to the power increases as i initially explained this one is increasing we know that the power factor is also increasing it's approaching unity so the power is also what increasing also if you come to this side the if delta is increasing then it means that sign delta is also what increasing so in that case the power drawn is also increasing so now let's see you can see that the motor was operating as a, a, a leading power factor so as you increase the load the motor moves from the unity power factor i mean the leading power factor to unity power factor if you continue to increase the load then it will move from the unity power factor to a lagging power factor um, condition so let's see the a summary of um, all that we have discussed so far so this is what uh, we discussed so let's take a look at this so at the leading condition whilst the load is increasing delta is what increasing ia is increasing the theta which is the angle between the i and then the v phase decreases and then your cos theta increases okay so whilst the theta is in, uh, decreasing cos theta increases that the power factor increases so it continues to increase the power factor continues to increase till it gets to a unity power factor that is one so when it gets to a unity power factor it can no longer increase beyond one so at that point the power factor begin to decrease at a lagging power condition so whilst you continue to increase the load for the delta it continues to increase ia continue to increase but this time around your delta increases take note of this here the delta was decreasing here delta begin to what increase and the moment delta begin to increase then it means that power factor begin to what, to decrease that the lagging power factor condition so that's all that i have for you today um, i believe you really understood everything if you have any question you can post them so that we address them at the appropriate time until we meet again this is a Bismarck. Stay safe. Goodbye.